So one of the important things we need to be able to do in mathematics is to be able to factor. And the bad news. The hardest easy problem in mathematics is the problem of factoring to rewrite an expression as the product of two or more expressions. We say this is the hardest easy problem because it's very easy to explain what we want to do. We want to write something as a product. No problem. The difficulty is that it's actually very hard to figure out what those factors are. So let's start out with a couple of basic ideas. If n is a whole number, we have the following definitions. A whole number n is said to be composite if it can be written as a product of smaller whole numbers. Now, we can't always do that. So a whole number n greater than 1 is said to be prime if it's not composite. And an important idea here is that 1 is not considered prime or composite. It's a thing by itself. So let's determine whether 100 is prime or composite. Definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. So let's pull in our definition of what composite and prime mean. So the number is composite if I can write it as a product of smaller numbers, and it's prime if I can't. And so we observe that 100 can be written as a product of smaller numbers. Actually, there's many ways of doing this. Maybe one of them is 10 times 10. And so 100 can be expressed as a product of smaller numbers. So 100 is composite. Let's determine whether 5 is prime. So with 100, it was actually pretty easy because it didn't take us a lot of effort to come up with two smaller numbers that multiplied to 100. But 5 is a little bit more difficult. We have to check the product of smaller whole numbers and see if any of them multiply to 5. So the numbers smaller than 5 are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have to check every possible product of these numbers. Well, maybe not. One useful thing is that multiplication is commutative, so that a times b is the same as b times a. So if I check 2 times 1, I don't need to check 1 times 2. So about half of these products I don't need to worry about. But we do need to check all the other products. And we see that none of these is equal to 5. And since no product of smaller numbers is equal to 5, 5 is prime. Now, that's a lot of work. And so the first thing a mathematician asks when confronted with a problem that's a lot of work is, is there an easier way? And the answer is yes, as long as we remember our definitions. So remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics. And one of those important definitions is that of division. A divided by B is equal to C if and only if A is equal to B times C. And what this means is that if I can write a number as a product, then I can do a division that comes out evenly. So instead of seeing if two smaller numbers multiply to N, we can see if n is divisible by a smaller number. So we could try dividing 5 by the smaller numbers. So we find 5 divided by 1. And our definition of division says that since 5 divided by 1 is 5, then we know that 5 is equal to 1 times 5. And we've written 5 as a product. Unfortunately, that doesn't work because we need to be able to write this as a product of smaller numbers, and 5 is not smaller than 5. And so this division doesn't help since we have not written 5 as a product of smaller numbers. But we can try other divisors. So 5 divided by 2 is... And since there's a remainder, 5 is not 2 times something. 
5 divided by 3 is. And again, there's a remainder, so we go on to 5 divided by 4. And we've run out of numbers that are smaller than 5, and so we can conclude as before, since 5 cannot be written as a product of smaller numbers, it is prime. So let's look at those composite numbers. Suppose a number is not prime. Definitions are the whole of mathematics, so remember not being prime is the same as being composite, and the composite number can be written as a product of smaller numbers. So if our number is not prime, we can write our number n as the product a times b. And we define factors as follows. Suppose n is equal to a times b, then we say that a and b are factors of n, and we also say that n is a product of a and b. And this leads us to an important idea. A prime factorization of a number n is a product equal to n, where each factor is a prime number. Now, if I want to write a number as a product of primes, I have to know what the prime numbers are. And we've already determined that 5 is a prime number. But what about others? And here's the bad news. There's no easy way to determine if a number is prime. We have to go through some process of trial and error before we determine that a number is prime, and it takes a lot of effort. There aren't very many things that are worth memorizing in mathematics, but one of the things that it is useful to remember are the primes, at least the primes under 20. And so here they are. So we might try to find a factorization of 30 and a prime factorization of 30. So again, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. A factorization just means we want to write 30 as a product. And so we might use 30 is equal to... Eh, how about 3 times 10? So remember, we also want to find a prime factorization. And so remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. A prime factorization is a factorization where all of our factors are prime numbers. And maybe we're fantastically lucky. Or maybe the universe is a kind and gentle place. Don't count on it. So we recall our list of prime numbers, and 3 is a prime number but 10 isn't, and so this is not a prime factorization. However, we do note that 10 can also be written as a product. 10 is equal to 2 times 5 equals means replaceable, so any place I see 10, I can replace it with 2 times 5, and so that means we can write 30 as the product 3 times 2 times 5, and 3, 2, and 5 are all primes, and so this is a prime factorization of 30.